sure what she said he at one point when we were discussing this earlier. So I'm kind of thinking it probably is a male character, and I can skip that part. Um, <laughs> I could have been that a part. I don't have to ask you. No, no, that's it's, true. It's a guy. That's true. You could you could be tricking me. Um, yeah. Other than that, we're going to go through the kinds of questions that a police sketch artist would ask the witness to an event to get more information about what the person looks like that they're looking for. That doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad guy. He might be a missing person. He might be whatever, someone unphotographed. Who knows? Let me ask you a question. Sure. Huh? Do you do the face or the whole body? Um, I can probably do some torso stuff in the 45 minutes or so that we have available. OK. Um, I generally do the face, but I like to have a little extra on top okay. of that. But I'm, I'm happy to go farther than that if you would prefer that for the characterization of who we're doing here. Today. I just didn't know how much description to give you. Um, depending on what this character is like, if that is important, let's just go for it. And we'll see how, we okay, can, how just, much we can get done. I'll tell you how much I know, and then you do what you can. Excellent. OK. So first thing that we're going to start with though, is the head. The, the overall head shape and structure. Are we talking about somebody who has a very round head, an elongated head, squarish? Like, what would you say? Well, he's a Slav. Okay. He's Russian, mm -hmm. native Russian. So uh, a little bit wider cheekbones. He has wider cheekbones, higher cheekbones. Mm -hmm. He is uh, fair skinned. He has light brown hair, mm -hmm. very long. Oh, you brought notes. Holy cow. Well, I mean, <laughs> well yeah. I'm, I'm a liar. Every time I do this, there's a first something that happens. Never had anybody bring notes. This is amazing. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Okay. I'm enjoying this more and more in minutes into the thing here. Holy cow. So He's got a broad face. Broad face. His eyes aren't, aren't very wide, but they're green, which will not, I think that's beyond your yeah, scope green, today. Green I can't do, but light will come across, okay. for sure. Now, um, cheekbones high, central, high. Kind of high, okay, high. Yeah. Good, I kind of defaulted to high when I was doing wide spaced, and it works out great. All right. Um, Tell me about his hairstyle. You said he has light yeah, hair? He has light, light colored hair, not blonde, but light brown. Mm -hmm. It's very long. Uh, he's a wizard. Oh, okay. uh, It's very long, but he usually braids it down his back. If it's loose, it's really wispy. So as far as his hairline, would you say widow's peak, straight across? Um, is it pulled back so that his hairline is very exposed, or does it come down on the side? It's pulled back. Okay. Uh, it's pulled back. So we see his whole hairline? Yeah. And what, what kind of shape are we thinking of for the across mm, the brow? Not a widow's peak. Not, maybe more like mine, where it's kind of curved over here and then yeah. back on the sides. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So bring that down here. Um, the rest of this pull back kind of tight in a ponytail. I'm thinking. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And going down the structure of his forehead. Um, a lot of people have a more prominent ridge on the top of their forehead. Um, masculine tends to look like that more than feminine does. Um, but then at that point there's sometimes even like a almost like a dimple that he happens has, here. He has slight hollows here. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna like this. And I said Anybody that wants to actually come up and see what's happening on the page, right now you won't see much because it's all being done in white. But we're going to get in and do some dark room very shortly. Um, Charlene, I just wanted to let you know I'm behind you. <laughs> She's taking video from a different <laughs> angle <laughs> so that we can kind of splice things together and make a little YouTube thing. And it'll be fun. Sure. As long as you don't mind. I don't mind. Um, OK. His ears. Would you say they're smallish, largish, and they're kind of in the middle? They lie flat to the head. Flat to his head. Adjust that a little here. And are they exposed, or is the hair pulled over them? Um, hmm. They're exposed. They are exposed. 
Okay, so here's pull back behind the computer right there. And also get right down here. Um, jawline, does he have a rounded edge or a more of a sharp edge? Is it very chiseled and defined on his jaw? Okay. <coughs> Looking away, I'm going to be saying. Yeah, yeah. Give me an example of Or is there an actor who has a jawline that it would He has a in? narrower jawline. Oh, okay. So it really triangles out from yes. his bra to. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we can do that for sure. And um, thinking about the spacing of his nose, uh, the length of his nose, how, how long would you say it is? Would it be, um, like you have a, a rather short nose and I have a much longer nose. Um, we, we are kind of on the extremes of things. He has a, a thin-bladed long nose. Thin-bladed, okay, so that's almost the opposite of his cheek nose. That's gonna be probably very dramatic. And, and it's long, so it's gonna come down to here. This is great. This is like an anatomical reference stuff at this point, trying to figure out exactly how that structure continues to make sense. Um, is, how about his mouth? Is it wide? Is it narrow? Is it pursed a little? Yeah. How, how would he express with his mouth in, in a, just a standard look? Uh, he has a, well, it's not one of those frowny mouths. Mm -hmm. Uh, he has a mouth that very much like this lady's. Well, that's not frowny at all, especially no, once you've kicked out of the audience. <laughs> you like picking on me this time. I do. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so much. Okay, so kind of a, a widened Cupid's bow. Yeah. And not real prominent. Just, not real just, prominent. Uh, okay. Not that I'm... Like methodically describing you or anything, except maybe Nothing that kind of sounds that. like it. <laughs> but wide and expressive. Yes. So, okay. Got it. Um, as far as the lines from his nose to the, the sides around his mouth, um, pretty prominent or less so? Um, that's when we're starting to get into his age about how much he age is he showing? Is in his mid twenties. Mid twenties, okay. But he's had a hard life. Mid twenties, little roughened. So maybe some weathering more than actual like smile creases and things mm -hmm. like that. Okay. And all right. Uh, so bottom lip. Um, are we looking at something a little more? Forward or a little more recessed or kind of straight in the middle? Straight in the okay. middle. Alright. See, these are the kind of questions an art director will never ask you. No. <laughs> they just say, who's the prettiest guy we can get? That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's like that new, new movie with a. Uh, Sandra Bullock and uh, is, yeah, yeah like, but yes. is, is he really the person? Yeah, exactly. Um, chin, uh, how wide or how long would you say his chin is from the bottom of his mouth? Where I mean, we can go Jay Leno, or we can just have something a lot more um, reserved. No, and, it, like, it, it's not that uh, forward. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. A gentle progression, I guess. Gentle progression, okay. So, one of the things I've noticed is there's a kind of a, a line here that's where the musculature of your mouth articulates that's created around from here to here. How deep would you say this section is, these little pockets underneath the sides of the mouth. Oh, let's try making it deep. It, it, it would be pretty dramatic if yeah. it's deep. I'm noticing like the rock has very deep uh, chin structure. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, they, we can get into that and it, it can be very expressive, especially if there's, if there's ever humor, it'll it can kind of crease up and suddenly you see all that humor on the face expressed. Um, Okay, see what I mean? There's this, there's this little pocket that happens in here that 
can be really yeah, expressive, but nobody yeah. notices it. Yeah. It's just part of that muscular structure. Um, okay. And the space isn't really long. It's definitely more wide than long. Now we're going to get into the complicated stuff. Eyes are always the last thing we want to talk okay. about because eyes are like everything. Um, first thing is how deep would you say they're set under his brow? Does he when when the sun is shining down on him from above? Are there shadows on his eyes that are Sam that are Leon? almost obscuring? What's that? Or is it Sam? Um, gosh, now I lost his name. Oh no! <laughs> With the mustache. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. Yeah, he's got those. He's got those deep set eyes that really create shadows that look great in a western. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like it's high noon and you can't see my eyes at all. <laughs> you know, I don't think his eyes are that deep set. Okay, um, it's not common in Slavic facial structures to have that, but it would be interesting. Um, there is a part of the brow that becomes the bridge of the nose. How deep would you say that? That inset is where the nose begins. Not deep at all. No, it, it's almost right from the yeah. brow down. Got it. Cool. Cool. All right. And um, as far as his eye shape goes, everybody's like, does he have almond eyes? That doesn't really explain much at all. Um, sometimes men's eyes have very little curve on the bottom, and sometimes they have a lot of curve on the bottom. Like mine tend to have a bunch of curve. Yeah. And, like, for example, his back here yeah. in the red jacket have a lot less curve. His and they have that, that little structure underneath the yeah. eye that creates the extra shadow, right? He has less curve. Less curve. Uh, his eyes are not, not extremely round. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, there is this little extra fold that a lot of people get under their eyes that's, that kind of creates a, a deeper shadow under there. Um, that's common with people who have less curve, but it's not always, because if he has any Asian or anything in his ancestry, that just gets taken right out. Like, mm -hmm. and so an, an Asian eye would have less curve, which is why they say almond, because it's simple, and without that structure. So more European would have it with that structure. He's, he's definitely completely Russian, so okay. Say. So he would definitely have some of it yeah. in here. So. Um, does he have kind of full cheeks, or is the the cheekbone the most prominent part? His cheeks are kind of flat. Cheeks are flat. The They're almost like down to the like exercise jaw. Yeah. Okay. He's got it. He does that thing that influencers do with it. <laughs> Sucking it all in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, top of his eyelid. How much of this piece of the eyelid is exposed when his eyes are open? Sometimes that all kind of will fold right up yeah, into not the... Not much. Okay, not so much. he's got a little bit, but, yeah. but most of it goes up into his yeah. ocular cavity. Right. Gotcha. Are his eyebrows as light as the rest of his hair? Yes. They are. Okay. Yes. Um, thick, thin, pointed. Uh, they, are, they're pretty thick. They so are they shaped or are they really natural and just doing what they do? They're doing what they they're do. Doing what they do. Okay. <laughs> Let me get in there for that. Um, are the eyebrows low on his brow or up high? Like mine are mine are up higher from my brow, and some people have that mysterious low. Yeah, okay. It's got that. <laughs> Let's look at that this is pretty fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> listen, everybody's welcome to come up and watch, but at the same time, sometimes you want to just listen. You, you can photograph this as I go. This absolutely. Is, this is fantastic listening to your questions, but my question to you, Charlene, would be. Is this a character that is coming in a story for you? Oh, thank this you. Is, this is Eli Savarov uh, from the Gunny Rose books. Oh, okay. 
Okay, and you've Excellent. always wanted a different look from your head? Well, I, I just wanted to see what was in my head. You know, you can look at headshots from actors all you want, and you see a lot of attractive or interesting people, but you don't see the people in your head. Exactly. And it's, it's not that the other people who have portrayed this character have done by any means a bad job, but every author who has a visual imagination has an idea of what their characters look like that if they can't draw them, they can never completely get that out on a page or get the perfect casting that's super rare to see somebody who is exactly the right cast for that character. Um, so this is something that I do because I've learned the way to ask the questions to get the descriptions. And by doing that with an author who's intimately familiar with the character they're writing, they get a chance to experience that visually instead of just in their imagination. I've done this with a bunch of people and some of them actually will use the pictures that I do when they're next describing that character because it's got more visual information than they've ever actually written on the page before. And they can say, I look at this and describe it with words. Yeah. And there you go, you have a resource when it's all done. All right, you mentioned his eyes are green. Um, does he have narrow or small irises or large irises? A, a small iris can be very intense or very innocent at times, and a large iris can be almost an overwhelming darker area where you don't see the whites of somebody's eyes very much. Mm -hmm. And it's weird that people have different sized irises. That is, I've never it noticed is, that. It is weird. Um, that, there's genetics behind it, I'm yeah. sure, but I've never really studied exactly why. It's, I just know I've seen a bunch of people who have irises that are little compared to others. Um, like Anne weird. Hathaway has crazy small irises, for example, and you see, you see the whites around her eyes an awful lot yeah. compared to yeah. most people, and it makes her eyes look huge. I don't think he has small irises. So his, his eyes come off dark even though they're green because he's got very little light showing yeah. no matter what yeah. direction he's looking. Yeah. Right. Even if he's looking at you like this, you don't see a lot of the white under his eyes. Right. right. Gotcha. Okay. And now as we're getting some actual shadow here, we'll be able to see where this is going. His neck is heavily tattooed. Heavily tattooed? Can you describe some of those? <laughs> <laughs> no. Now I'm excited. <laughs> no, no. Uh, they're all uh, wizard symbols. The more Perfect. tattoos you have, the stronger the wizards you are. Eventually, I, they'll be up on the space. I got you covered on that. I, <laughs> I figured you would know what to do. Okay. I did get the first look of that series, too. Oh, good. Oh, well, he'll, he'll know then. Yeah, I've had this weird thing since COVID, which is odd. Um, when COVID started and things went downhill, I stopped being able to read. I stopped being able to write. Isn't that crazy? It is. It was excruciating since I had a book to read. Yeah, I, I used to read four books a week yeah, on the average. Yeah, me too. And now I can sit down and read a chapter, and then I have to set it aside. I get, like, I don't know, almost Unfocused. PTSD about yeah, it or something. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird thing. So now we're getting all of your stuff on audiobooks. Just, like, oh, that's, well, that's sure. the way it is. Um, but we well, do we have a couple of hard cuts. Oh, yeah, we've had, we've had those in the car forever. Yeah, it's just been she our was driving so great. Material. Joanna was such a great she actress. Was amazing vocal talent. I did some events with her uh, while I was touring sometimes. Yeah, you were, you were lucky. They cast her perfectly for you and your stuff. Um, all right. When he pulls his hair back into a ponytail, is it a high tail or is it from the bottom, is it in the middle? It's braided from the bottom. Okay, braided from the bottom, right, gotcha, okay. So there, got something like that, kind of set up. And 
is he, when he's looking at another person across a table, across a room, how would you say he poses? Is he the kind of person that will fold his hands in front of him and kind of look at a person? No. He, uh, how does he engage with the person who's, who's he looking? He might lean forward. Might lean forward. But he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't do anything with his hands because his hands are his magic. weapons. Oh, yes. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Good call. <laughs> but yeah, but true. it's canon now, because so you said it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, once you say it, that's the way it is. Well, it's not really that you made it up. Subconsciously, you knew it. Yeah, yeah you've had yeah, it all along. I did. A lot of writing is subconscious. Yeah, you know how your character is going to react to something. Mm -hmm. And what is he wearing as far as his collar goes? Uh, open neck. Open neck? Yeah. Um, so like a button-down kind of thing that's yes. not buttoned on top? Yeah. Okay. Now with that, he's going to wear his wizard's vest, but the shirt is a regular shirt. Okay. Well, tell me about the wizard's vest. The wizard's vest is really a lot like a fisherman's vest with lots of little pockets to put your herbs and potions in? Of course. Makes a whole lot of sense. So, that's describing anybody who attacked me. <laughs> I'm describing somebody I wish. <laughs> All right. And when we think about his irises, how much detail would you say you could see in the, um, what are those called? Those little lines that go around in your iris. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Uh, they would be, wouldn't they be brown? Or um, I mean, they could be a little bit. I mean, there's so many variations in green eyes. Yeah. Um, they could be very, like, little figure eights overlapping each other sometimes. There's all sorts of wow. fractal patterns that can happen in <laughs> yeah. people's eyes. Yeah. A lot of people just draw them as lines, but there could be so much more than that. And again, if he's magic, he might have a little of that going on, you know? Yeah. All right, so let's see if we can find out. My son has yeah. green eyes that occasionally just tint more hazel. Uh huh. Like they go from green to hazel just because of how they how the fractal patterns hit. Okay. here to the front, and that's where we left it. <laughs> I could get you the microphone. Uh, the thought of the microphone being something I had to concentrate on making sure I was speaking into would make this tricky. I mean, I, I could give it a try if everybody thinks that it would help, but it's, it's a whole extra component to add to this that might not be friendly to the end product, you know? Distraction. Mm -hmm. uh, forehead wrinkles, what kind of things are we looking at there? Anything, or is it pretty smooth? Well, he's in his 20s. Yeah, but weathered. Well, you, you yeah, I would say so, he would have at least one. But, okay, that, that center one that kind of straight across. Maybe kind of pattern, texture, like Rob's forehead. 
I'm not in my 20s. No, but you tried to blow yourself up, so your forehead's a little patterned. My, my forehead is a little patterned because I, I burned it all off one day. <laughs> a wizard might have had an accident like that at one point. Yeah. In his life. Well, that's true. <laughs> well, your, your wizard lives in a drier climate, too, doesn't he? Uh, well, now he was really he was raised on the, uh, on the sea in the flotilla surrounding the Tsar when he escaped from Russia. Ooh. So he was raised in a variety of boats, really. Oh, okay. And then they finally were accepted uh, into America. You know, that salt water can do as much damage yeah. as... Yeah. Good call. Does it, son? This is when we're really getting some personality uh -huh. showing up on here, which is great. Are we starting to feel like he's what you imagined? Or are there things that, at this point, I can do quite a bit of <coughs> manipulating? Um, in about four or five minutes, that will be trickier. So, without making it look like mud. So I think we're doing good here. All right. He's in your head. You have him pretty well fixed in there. I can tell you've got a visual image of him in your head. Um, we about eighty percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eighty percent is not bad. I can get I can get sixty percent of what I've got in my head half the time. I fear that's a successful. Piece. I feel that way when I write a book. Right. I think all creative people have a little bit of that they have to get used to, where um, it's never going to be exactly what you thought it was going to be or what you wished it was going to be, but you find a percentage that you're comfortable with, and whether that's conscious or not, and say, that is a little bit before the time you found it, please to hit that. eyelashes. I meant to ask you that earlier and I was kind of spaced a little bit. Mm. They're not extremely long. And they're light, so. So it's a no makeup. Yes. He does not look like he's ever wearing eyeliner. Never, but, he, <laughs> but he's got all these tattoos, yeah. so. It's, it wouldn't let you look at his eye structure for very long anyway because the yeah. tattoos are awfully distracting. Okay. How symmetrical are his tattoos? Um, is there any symmetry? Or is it just wild abandon? He gets them as he achieves different levels of proficiency. So I would say they were standardized, and probably the position of them is somewhat standardized, too. Ah, okay. So each one means a specific thing in an order? Am I getting a, a Yes, that's what I, yeah. It's part of an order? Yes, um, he is. 
He's a Grigori. Got it. Okay. So, let's see here. The first one that happens is going to be under his hand. Because it's not necessarily a uh, immediately seen from the front kind of thing. And we're going to build him from there. Would his mystical symbols be derivative of any particular ancient religion or current or current uh, cuneiform or they would look more Cyrillic. Cyrillic. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So this is a modern Eastern European group that founded by Gregory Rasputin. Oh. All right, we're getting somewhere here. I'm starting to figure this out. Definitely in a, in a visual storytelling point here, we can get into a little bit of that. Tattoos are really important, uh, but he doesn't have a super expressive face until you get to know him, and then he becomes a different person. Excellent. Good question. What other kinds of questions have we got here? Because I'm actually at the point where um, getting the job done instead of asking Charlene more description questions, and as she can watch, she can kind of say, oh, adjust this as I go, and uh, now she's kind of here to say more about the character if you want to know more about it, and anything you ask, I can try to incorporate as I go. What kind of, what kind of body type does he have? Body size. He's tall and lanky uh, with broad shoulders. He's used to, in his capacity as a Gregory, he knows he scares people. Uh, but as a human being, he's an approachable person. So, conflict. Rob, when would you ask about facial hair? Would that be after like the jawline or the... Um, I got the impression as she was describing it with how triangular it was. Yes. He's probably clean shaven. He is clean But I didn't think to ask and she didn't tell me he wasn't. So I would have stopped at you. this point I think if he yeah. needed a big old bushy beard, yes. he would have said something. Yeah. At what point ask because you kind of started at the top and worked. Um usually around asking. the time I'm asking about the mouth. But okay. since the cheekbones and the chin had been really figured yeah. out at that point and the triangularness of it all, yeah. um he felt clean shaven to me and I mean, I'm not going to make any excuse. I skipped a little bit because it seemed right for him. Sometimes, sometimes there's a weird thing that happens where, as we're getting into this, there's, I've been told that the questions can be almost hypnotic. It puts you in a place where you're very much concentrating on your inner eye. And in the course of that, I almost get subconscious information about what I'm doing. Um, which, if you know me, is probably a real simple way of putting it. Um, when I skip a question, it's probably because subconsciously I already had the answer figured out. So you get the picture in your hand and that's what you're putting on paper? Um, no. Okay. This is actually exactly the opposite of that. I start with all just anatomy knowledge. Oh, okay. Everything is not a picture on head. It's in my head. It's a um, a knowledge of expected facial structures in a three-dimensional space, basically. Okay. And 
those get translated to um, the variations that might happen from any individual to another. So there's like a base face that artists are kind of taught to use, like the half, half, half kind of divisions and all of that. That's a simplification of internal musculature and bone structures and all of that. And when I start asking questions, I start trying to get more really specific information about those structures instead of the divisions, the, the artistic shortcuts that people get. Because I mean, shortcuts are great when you're learning, but eventually if you're gonna do something like this, you gotta just know all of the all of the parts and pieces and how they work together, you know, and how they can be different from one person to the next. Feeling like the magical symbols are beautiful but sharp. Does that feel yes. about right? Yes. I mean, for the for the kind of thing that he seems like he's representing and Rasputin coming up and saying all that. Yeah. He's he's got a notoriety for being charming and maybe put maybe not beautiful but somehow magnetic, charismatic, right? Yeah. And also. There's, there's this implica implication of like, blade shapes and things like that that are happening in here that feel kind of raspy. Well, Gregorius can move, can move earth, or they can kill people. It's, yeah, there's a wide variety of... So maybe there should be some strong horizontal and vertical structures going on in here too to make the, the element of that become part of the design. They're able to move earth out of that hard, flat, like rock-like structure kind of thing might, might be part of their design work. Are the tattoos just down his neck, or are they all over oh, him? They're all over. They're all over him. Okay. So that, I'm not stopping any of them at the collar line. They're going to just go straight on yeah. down. Okay. All the way back behind his ears to where his hairline hits and gets pulled back. Yes. Yeah. Everything. You got it. Everything happening here. Are they climbing up his neck yet, or are they just still down here? They're like this now, and eventually they'll go up his face. I remember that, I just wasn't sure if they had started climbing the, the front of his neck yet. You know, I hadn't really thought about whether they were under his jaw. I would think to be more effective, they would have to be visible. Okay. The one on his hand is to repel bullets. Right. Ah. It's a good place for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that's pretty intimidating when he's just like, stop, and the bullets do what he says, and, and the people who fire it. <laughs> Don't we all wish we had that? Their legs melt. Wizard's vest that's over his. I'm assuming white or light it's blue shirt. It's usually white, yeah. Okay. Um, the wizard's vest yes. is also white? Yes. Excellent. His shirt might be any color. It might be plaid or. Because I know a fisherman's vest tends to be more like brown or green. Yeah. Right? But uh, yeah, I like that it's easily identifiable as not a fisherman's vest because of that color. Heavy canvas. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't hear the end. Sorry. Is the, uh, the request like inaccessibly, like over top of the clothes, or is it just straight away? Yeah, it's, no. it, it goes over the top of the clothes. <coughs> That would be an interesting look. <laughs> does he wear any jewelry at all? Does he wear, oh, we can get into that. He does not. Good question, though. It is a good question, because I was just looking at his ears and thinking, would he wear earrings? And I thought, no, I don't think so. Not this guy, but good to, good to know for other characters when they're asking, right? When I'm doing this, I'm really looking at anatomy stuff and not necessarily embellishment stuff, but that's definitely part of the character that should be considered. I don't think he would wear a necklace because it would cross his tattoos. Oh, right. Yeah. And that could probably... His nose. His nose and his cheekbones. Yeah. I'm seeing right here. That's yeah. immediately you don't immediately look at his eyes no. when you see his face. You see that strong, sharp nose and how wide his cheekbones are kind of matters. Often it's the eyes because the eyes kind of make or break the moment, and that's why I usually save them till towards the end, because or at least the end of the anatomy description, because everything else has to be right, and then the eyes have to fit into all of that. Um, and a lot of people know what the eyes look like, but don't have the words to tell an artist what the eyes look like. And that's because in the media, when, our, when we describe our eyes, we use words that don't always mean the same thing to, the same pe to different people. Like, if you tell me something is almond-shaped, I have a, an image of an almond in my head at that point. It's a nut, you know? It's not an eye. And it isn't really shaped like anybody's eye, not actually. There's, there's structures above and below an eye that are are the <coughs> defining features and they aren't a three-dimensional smooth surface or like lined surface like an almond is. So you know when, when we describe a person's eyes as round, nobody's eyes are a circle, right? When you say round, it's a circle. You hear people have their eyes described as round all the time and it's not ever true, <laughs> you know? So getting a vocabulary that both of us understand and creates a complete accurate description between us can be tricky sometimes. It worked out really easily this time, but uh, doesn't always work that way. Especially if people are used to writing for what the general public understands and not a person who's trying to represent something artistically with specific kinds of shapes and forms will understand. So I actually uh, because you were talking about like, he's been on boats and planet and stuff like it, does he not kind of based off but does he have very many kind of scars or anything like that? Like just not not yet. He will. <laughs> 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 Sorry man. Things are gonna get bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, in like a similar vein, does he have any sort of like just otherwise like facial infections, like any moles or like any acne or like freckles or anything like that on like the like, same shuttle? Some of my characters have been heavily facially scarred, but this guy hasn't. Yeah. Still young. Yeah. Got plenty still of time. Young. 
Yeah, but he doesn't have them on his cheeks yet. So. Oh, okay. Just to let you know, I've been recording for 40 minutes now. Okay. What are we looking at on the time? I have no idea. Oh, oh okay. Oh, they're, they're going to kick us out of here and like... So, time to, time to hurry up. <laughs> it's looking good. When you first develop a character, do you see them this specifically, or do they grow? They grow until I see them very clearly. And when people say, oh, do the actors match your character? And I said, no. I mean, the character lives in my head, and there's no way people can extract, extract that Yes, there is. <laughs> but, but by the way, a very good idea. By the way, that isn't accurate. It's entirely possible. It you just is. Gotta, you gotta kind of know what to do. You gotta have the, have the words and the and the questions. It never that. occurred to me to 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 do this. I was so excited to see this on the schedule. I think this. Did you see this character? Yeah, yes, yes, I did. That was part of what I asked her to do when we talked about this in the lobby the other day, is pick a character that you do see very clearly. Because some authors have one or two characters that are the main ones that they really have a good grasp of, and then some side characters, some tertiary people who, they could be whatever, it's the personality that matters more than the, the image. And we really wanted this one to be someone who the image was super clear on, so that we, when I asked her these questions, she had the answers. You know, uh, otherwise, if I ask an author really <coughs> specific questions, it ends up taking them minutes to decide on the spot because they're literally rebuilding the character for art instead of words. Or visual. I think it would be fun to have a reader do the same thing you're doing, Charlene, and see how closely the picture is. That would be interesting. Based on the descriptions yeah. you put out already. Because readers, uh, readers have filters in their own heads, mm -hmm. and they see everyone differently from the way the, the author sees them. Have you ever been walking down the street with, oh, that looks like a character in my head? Mm. Yes. yes. Oh, that's wow. cool. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, Bill the Vampire was based on a waiter uh, at a cafe I was in. I went to him and I thought, that's him. <laughs> Does he know? Oh, no, I never saw him again. <laughs> that would have been pretty weird. You know? I, based, I based a vampire on you. Yeah. I wonder how often he hears that from people. <laughs> not, not too often, not about how they look. Have you ever been so disappointed when it becomes another person, a real person, about how different the character is from what you saw? I had to get over that pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a rough one, because Hollywood's not casting based on the uh, personality match or the, the, the ethnicity Descri match or, or the description, description in the books. Yeah. Yeah. Anna yeah. Paquin was a very good Sookie, but she, she was nothing like I had pictured. She was nothing like I had Me either. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but she was the best actress for the part. Yeah, honestly, when Anna Paquin showed up on screen looking like that, she looked more like Sookie than she looked like Anna Paquin. Because no one had really seen her blonde and in that kind of attire and all of that in any of her other movies before or anything else she had done. So really, she changed to be more sooky, which you gotta, oh, gotta get absolutely. credit for. Her. She sure got tired of bleaching her hair. I can yeah. imagine. Come behind you, Rob, don't let me startle you. We can probably go about 10 more minutes. The hotel has to make changes because they are at auctions again. Oh, so. gotcha, okay. It won't even be 10 minutes. I'm gonna give this guy a name, sign it, photograph it, and we're out of your way. So if you wanna, if you wanna start putting stuff where it's got to go around us as long as we don't move, we're good. It'll be all right. They can just come in and sign. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I forgot. We're actually in that room. 
Okay, so what was his name? Eli. Eli. E L I. E L I. Well, it's it's a you know an Americanization of his. what was his name? Uh, Eli. Okay, don't worry about that. We'll just do Eli. Guitar. Yeah, let's just do I L Y A. Yeah, we don't want to. She told me that. She's the best. What was his name again? Who was this character? Eli, Eli Savarov. He's in the, in the first Gunny Rose books and he goes all the way through. How do you spell Savarov? S A B A R O V. S A B is in Victor? Yes. Uh huh. reason we keep coming back year after year for the last 10 years, honestly. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Didn't you, Rob? I mean, Rob was our artist guest of honor with George R. R. Martin once. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because Daryl Sweet died, and then um, we had to scramble and Oops, I'm sorry. get someone, and we had met Rob in our West Coast. So that was one of the best turning in Oh, I love it. That's so wonderful. Thank you. I, I'm glad it matches what you imagined. Now you have that to always reference when you're seeing him and try, describing him in oh, whatever yeah. scene. Yeah. And now if you yeah. really want to get more detailed, detailed about describing his tattoos and the style of them, they're all there in front of you, ready to go. That's it. Thank you for a real treat. I'm so happy you enjoyed it. Very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Some of them on my Facebook page. Right there. I've missed taking yeah. photos of two of them, I think. And most of them are there, but you're going to go out way back on my Facebook page to find them. Um, maybe I have to do something about that. I don't know. Put them in a folder or something that's specifically just there. Because they're just in whatever, whenever MissCon was, or whenever, whatever I've done it at was. <laughs> yeah, it's just whatever order chronological is happening. Um, I have so many things that would be pin posts. Oh, yeah, you know, folders. Oh, here's five pin posts. Sort through them. It's just been a pleasure to see. Reminds me of should keep them safe for you. Oh, thank you. I try to come prepared. <laughs> and you did. I have enjoyed this so much, and I really appreciate what you did. It was an incredible pleasure meeting and working with you. I cannot begin to tell you. Yeah. I mean, honestly, oh, I'm so sorry. It's, no, no, no. Twenty percent of this time has been me going, "Don't be a fanboy." <laughs> really. Well, I'm certainly a fangirl.